Next month, XL Energy plans to file its long-term energy resource plan with the State Public Utilities Commission. I want to have a place for my kids to continue to grow up where there is sustainable jobs. So what you're creating out here bubble is a toxic waste dump because right now there's no place to store this material, no place. Some tough discussions to come because XL Energy is retiring its coal-fired Comanche station in Pueblo at the end of the decade, and it's considering whether nuclear energy could take its place. When I was younger, when I was growing up, my parents used to take me out to the Mesa Drive-In, and as we were coming out, um, we could see ahead of us the whole hillside glowing red. It looked like lava coming down the hill, and it was the coal slag um, from the Evraz, or formerly CF&I steel mill. And it, this is a picture of what it looked like. This is just a small, like one uh, bucket dumping right now, but the whole hillside you can see has some glowing slag still coming down the side of the hill from the other buckets. Uh, this hill across the creek from us, and behind, beyond those trees back there, is the hill I was talking about. But the creek flows in from west of town and then flows through uh, the grounds of the Everaz steel mill. And they have the permit that allows them to use the creek as an industrial waste sewer. The water has kind of a gray appearance. The, the folks here in the neighborhood have called it um, the black water in the past. Um, and it appears to have some of that coloration because of uh, the coal slag that, is, that makes up some of the substrate. Pueblo is a, a great place to live. This community is so um, friendly and outgoing and um, the people are wonderful. Um, we are, however, a low-income community and uh, we have nearly 50% um, Latino, Latina, Latine, and Indigenous. Our median household income hovering right around 55000 per year, which puts us significantly lower than that of the state or the national median household income. I think for most folks who live here, they understand Pueblo's rich, rich history. Um, that prior to the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo in the, in the mid to late 1800s, the border um, between the U.S. and Mexico ran right through this community. Pueblo's identity really is as a union town. Dolores Huerta and Cesar Chavez, other labor leaders that were very well known within the Chicano community, came and were part of the strike with the steel workers. And so this has long been a community where folks have remained and raised their families or have gone, folks have gone away but chosen to come home to raise their children. And that's really one of the biggest assets of Pueblo is the opportunity to come back to this, to your family, to your extended family and to raise your children. Because, you know, who wants to raise their children isolated in, 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 in a community where they don't have deep connection? Um, and if we don't care for our environment, if we're not engaged in, in, in both the little things and the big things that impact our environment and impact our health, um, we're, not gonna, you know, we're not gonna be able to provide those opportunities and folks aren't going to be able to remain here. So right up here is the Excel Comanche coal plant. Um, we have units one and two kind of put together and then off to the side is unit three, which is the largest of the three. Uh, unit three has been identified by the Public Utilities Commission as Colorado's number one source of CO2. And according to the EPA's toxic release inventory, it's Pueblo's number one source of other air pollutants like mercury and hydrochloric acid. The Comanche 3 plant, it is one of the state's largest sources of greenhouse gases. And according to federal data, the three plants in Pueblo combined produce about 2 million tons 
of toxic pollution into Pueblo's air in 2019. Climate activists gathered on the steps of the Pueblo County Courthouse today. It was a rally for clean energy and part of ongoing discussions over the future of XL's Comanche power plant. The activists called on county commissioners to consider a renewable energy approach, their own polling. Renewables are the most popular option that Pueblo in sight. Our community really needs to be getting on with uh, the resource that we have in abundance, which is shining down on our head right now. Solar panels are already in use around the plant, and it could even be part of a multi-pronged solution. We're going to be asking the Public Utilities Commission to study and pursue a new, really exciting idea called a renewable energy park. This renewable energy park would consist of uh, generation resources like um, solar and wind and possibly geothermal, uh, but it would also incorporate battery storage technologies like um, lithium ion as well as possibly a thermal battery. And we're hoping that that will be more appealing than uh, any kind of nuclear or gas with carbon capture. I really believe it will be. As a mom who's a millennial growing up, I think it's important to say what we see. I realized that climate justice is something that affects everybody, and if we're going to focus on intersectional issues, that climate justice is probably the one that's most likely to get all of us involved. We're in Benedict Park. It's a, uh, a playground associated with the church and school, but it belongs to the city. Um, and this, this is part of the um, Colorado Smelter Superfund site. Of course, the health implications depend on what the contamination is. But for instance, here, our main contaminants are lead and arsenic, and so lead and arsenic both damage the nervous system, but especially lead. There's no safe level of lead for children. Every level they, they've been able to test is associated with learning disabilities. When I look at people in our community, their hope and the way that they move through their lives, the way that we all support each other and come together when it matters the most, Pueblo shows up. It's what democracy looks like. We're marching for all those people in Washington who do not believe that there is climate change in the world. What better way to move this movement in taking back our rights than to teach our children that they are leaders right now? I want policymakers to know that we do care and we do pay attention to these things. Um, we're not, we're not just sitting here taking the decisions one way. There's no apathy over here. <laughs> it's, we are paying attention and we care about what's happening to not just us, but the environment around us, the animals, the earth. We all care a lot more than they're showing us. Pueblo County Commissioner Garrison Ortiz says that Comanche number three is supposed to keep operating until 2040, but he says the growing possibility that it could close earlier than that could hurt the area economically. I think on the surface for any community that has any uh, plant of that magnitude, you obviously have uh, immediate job loss. Uh, you have. We get sold this narrative that we have to choose between either our health and local environment or jobs and economy and it's really a, a false choice it's a false dichotomy we really don't have to trade our environment or our health for good jobs and a stable economy other communities don't have to do that and we shouldn't have to either it's what i hope for for the uh, PUC hearing, the public utilities hearing that is coming up here in Pueblo. I think the community will show out in a significant way. Um, and I think that there is enough sort of people power in this community and there's been enough sort of exercise of that muscle 
over the last 10 to 20 years that the community can actually and will actually stand together around this issue. This is the Pueblo Community Health Center. Um, it is Pueblo's first net zero municipal building. It's powered by uh, solar panels and heated and cooled by geothermal. The more time passes and the more educated people are, they're really open and positive to these ideas. People care about what is working. <laughs> it is really the easiest way to say it is um, people, people are hard workers here. And so if it works, it works. Behind me here, we see the Bighorn Solar Array, which is dedicated to powering the Evraz steel mill, which makes the Evraz, the steel produced by Evraz, the cleanest steel in the world. When um, a huge economic issue like the transfer of the coal plant and, and a huge impact, something that could, that could, could impact our, our um, environment for the better, um, I just, I see such opportunity and want so much for our community to be a part of those decisions, to have a voice in those decisions, and to be engaged with authentically. I really see environmental justice in Pueblo as another place to ensure that we are positioned in the very strongest way forward, in, in the very strongest position um, to, to bring opportunity to our community, opportunity for, for young people.